Okay. So um, let's talk about the course um, and a little bit more detail on what this course is all about. So Siobhan, can you just run through uh, the basics of, of the course and then we'll go through each module in turn. Yes, so um, we've devised an, uh, an eight module course, which fits nicely and with a sort of eight week time frame, but obviously it is flexible um, to work around people's work commitments or care commitments. Um, so you can do the course faster or slower, it's self-paced. Uh, it's uh, built around eight modules and uh, each module gives you skills and knowledge which take you, allow you to go up to the next level um, because microbiome science is extremely con complex and it does, you know, you need information from so many divergent fields of, of science and medicine, gastroenterology, psychiatry, biochemistry, genomics, uh, evolutionary biology, I could go on. But what we've done to make it really easy for you is, is brought together all these um, divergent fields under one learning umbrella so that you don't have to uh, worry about that. We've done all the hard work for you. And um, I think it really works. Fantastic. Let's move on to module one. Let's talk about what we're doing. Um, so module one is really all about sort of understanding the very basics of microbiome science. It's looking at terminology of the microbiome and, uh, and where microbiome science came from, you know, how it originated and, and how it has grown over the years and looking at our current and our future research in microbiome science. Let's go on to the module two now, Siobhan. So then we take you on to module two, which is, is the, the gut biome. So that's actually the structures um, that, and the microanatomy of the gut. It's really important before you meet your microbes to understand the habitat in which they live. And it's really been interesting for Sheena and I to sort of get an understanding of gut anatomy, microanatomy, to understand, I've said that 70% of your immune cells are, are focused in the gut. So it's discussing all the, the gut barrier, the immune function of the gut, and this wonderful gut communication system, uh, which uh, the gut can uh, communicate with different organs in the body and it commu communicates with your endocrine system and your immune system. And very important part of that is this enteric nervous system, which is the size of a cat's brain made up of neurons, which are strung along the gut barrier. Uh, very important in gut function, but also in the communication via the vagus nerve between the gut and your, and your brain. And then we, we finish with this sort of slightly uh, controversial uh, leaky gut syndrome, where we talk about what it means, what gut barrier dysfunction entails and how you can diagnose it and what the, the the concerns and controversies about this area are. Yeah, right. So module three um, will take a deeper dive into these little microorganisms that live within us. Uh, we're going to introduce you to some of the most important organisms in your gut and, and, and just this understanding of you know, the dynamics between these microorganisms and, and how that influences our health. Um, so we're gonna look at how these microorganisms communicate with each other, which ones benefit us, which ones are harmful to us, um, and how we discover microbes in the first place. So, you know, how, how the scientists have managed to culture and grow um, these microorganisms and the ones that won't culture and grow outside of the body, you know, how we've discovered them with, with very modern sequencing techniques. Um, so really interesting deep dive into the microorganisms in module three. So you'll have an understanding once you get to module four about what the gut microbiome is. And then we get to answer the second big question, which is how did it get there? And so you learn a lot about how you, uh, the genesis of your gut microbiota, um, and it's uh, a lot of it is from you know, paternal transmission through a vaginal delivery and through uh, breastfeeding. And you'll understand the key influences um, around the time of, of birth and also in, uh, as a child and adolescent and how that changes into adulthood, where there's a relatively stable period 
uh, and then as it moves on into old age, further changes in your gut microbiota composition at that time. And it's kind of a fascinating area about how the, the pillars of lifestyle medicine are so important in um, manipulating how your gut microbiome composition, uh, how it can be beneficial to you, uh, and how things like nutrition and sleep and um, uh, you know breastfeeding and uh, processed foods, how they can be so detrimental um, across the lifespan to your gut microbiome. Okay, so module five looks at how these microorganisms function. Um, so what they actually do within our bodies, um, which is you know, obviously of prime importance to us. And these three main areas of function that we're gonna take a much deeper look into. So the metabolic function of them, the immune function and the nervous function. Um, and these, mass, these areas are massive and the influence that the gut microbiota have on us is huge. So this is a, you know, this is a really fundamental area of microbiome science um, and, and really gives an awful lot of clues as to how, how these microbes link with us and, and the health of our bodies and, um, and the, the relationship between our, our microbes and disease. Uh, so module six moves on to a slightly controversial area of dysbiosis because no one exactly knows what dysbiosis is. So we're talking about what is a healthy gut microbiota and what is an unhealthy gut microbiota. And unfortunately, there's, uh, there's no clear definition at the moment, which makes it very difficult for researchers in the field. But we do know that certain things like having a very varied and diverse gut microbiota with lots of different um, uh, beneficial bacteria is thought to be a good thing, but otherwise it's very complex because different people have very different uh, compositions. Um, but we talked through these controversies about what is di dysbiosis, so that's an unhealthy gut microbiota composition that's associated with over 70 chronic diseases. You know, how does it develop? How might we um, avoid it? And, and we talk more about the non-communicable diseases that are associated with dysbiosis. Okay, module seven looks at how we can manipulate our gut microbiome. So this is a really interesting novel field of microbiome science and one that the drug companies are certainly latching onto now. Um, so we're looking at um, different things that we put into us that can influence our microbiotas. Um, so starting with prebiotics, um, which are within the foods that we eat, so the natural fibers that we eat um, in fruits and vegetables and whole grains and seeds and nuts, um, and how these will influence our, our microbiotas. And um, then we move on to probiotics, which are the microorganisms that benefit us. Um, and where we get these from and what these are and how they can benefit us. Um, a little deeper dive into fermented foods and, and what these um, are and how these can um, benefit us. And you know what, what fermented foods contain um, and a little closer look into the microorganisms within them. Um, we move on to postbiotics and symbiotics, which are again, sort of novel, um, uh, produced um, uh, aspects of this field, you know, containing um, uh, bacteria and their metabolic byproducts, um, along with the prebiotics and symbiotics, um, and how these can influence our um, microbiotas. And then we move on to FMT, which is um, fecal transplants and what these do to us. And, you know, this is a really fascinating area of research um, where we, we look at how um, taking fecal transplants from one individual and putting them into another can influence all sorts of things from people's weight to um, their immune function, their ability to tackle infections, um, all sorts of things can be um, manipulated with FMT, um, but also this is a controversial area of, of microbiome science. Um, there are a lot of unknowns around this field, um, and these are discussed um, in this module. And then we move on to module eight, which is my favourite module, which is lifestyle medicine and the gut microbiome. And so we go through the six pillars of lifestyle medicine sequentially, so that's mental well-being, 
healthy relationships, physical activity, healthy eating, sleep, minimizing harmful behaviors. And then it's not really one of the six pillars, but we talk about um, you know, nature and time in nature and how that affects your gut microbiome. So we moved through these sequentially and we were blown away by the connections between each of these pillars uh, and the gut microbiome composition. And you can actually have huge influence over your gut microbiome, um, which is incredibly exciting because it means it can be a tool for improving people's health. Um, and there's all the latest research on each of those things. The, the one that's got the most influence is diet and nutrition, but actually we were really excited by the breadth and depth of evidence on, on these other areas, particularly things like exercise. And we uh, talk about two aspects. We go to, if we talk about physical activity, we talk about uh, elite sports people, um, but we also go to the other extreme and talk about sedentary behavior and how that um, affects your, your gut microbiome. And it's incredible that these microorganisms that live in our gut, they like, exercise, they like circadian rhythms, they like to have a sleep weight cycle, they like, they're very fussy about their food, they like a good healthy diet, they don't like harmful substances, uh, they don't like alcohol, they don't like smoking, and uh, they don't like all the toxins and pollutants in the atmosphere, they do like walking in nature, uh, and um, they respond to positive connectivity and, and positive relationships, so it's kind of incredible uh, that through various immune and neural and endocrine systems that actually, you know, the networking within your body, how all these things connect is, is very exciting. Great. Well, that sort of sums up our, our course. Um, and, you know, it's pretty in depth. There's an awful lot to learn there. Um, so let's talk about who might benefit from this course. Um, you know, first of all, um, I, I personally would really, really like for my secondary care colleagues to be um, doing this course. Um, time and time again, I, I have wondered why there are not more discussions going on in secondary care about um, disease and, and lifestyle and the influence of the microbiomes. And, and I've often, um, you know, hoped that, um, that you know, people had a greater understanding within these fields of the influence of our microbiomes um, on our disease and, and, you know, trying to get people to, to think about their lifestyles more. Um, so personally, I think that, you know, anybody that works in secondary care, I think would really benefit from having this knowledge um, on microbiome science um, to, to understand how else we can manipulate um, diseases um, in a really, really beneficial way um, through the manipulation of our, our lifestyles. I would like to say that I think this course is very well suited to um, primary health care nurses and nurses working in, in secondary care as well. I, I find that a friend who's a nurse who's very interested in this area um, who feels it's a really good way um, to inform patients in a non-judgmental way about uh, you know, how to make changes that will improve their health. Uh, it's very relevant to nurses working in oncology because there's so much research at the moment about how the gut microbiome impacts your disease process. And obviously it's the, you know, um, the pathogenesis of, of, of many cancers are associated with the gut microbiome, but also um, incredibly relevantly is, is the response to treatment. Um, so I think it's really important there. I think, um, you know, nurses in primary care, it's a really good way to discuss um, healthy behaviours with patients. If, if we use the analogy of uh, looking after, you know, the, the ecosystem, your gut garden, and how best to um, use lifestyle pillars to to make sure that you have this very, very healthy ecosystem within your gut that then helps your, your health in, in numerous ways. Um, and also just um, in terms of antibiotic prescribing, in terms of awareness of, of what happens when you give people drugs, um, an awareness of the importance of promoting breastfeeding and promoting you know, natural births where possible um, and you know, encouraging all your patients to in, enjoy time in nature um, and again obviously the healthy eating aspect as well so I think nurses 
often have these conversations with patients, which may be doctors and maybe um, you know other other consultants don't have these very practical and uh, lifestyle medicine focused discussions with patients. And I think armed with the knowledge they would get from this course, uh, I think uh, not only to help their patients, but you know for our own health and our own understanding of you know, what, how we want our family and our friends and our children um, to eat. And I think it's, you know, it's invaluable, yeah. the information you'll get from this course.